On this episode of Fishing Edge, we continue our quest for broadbill swordfish off the East Gippsland coast in Victoria. On the previous show, I fished with Tom Hall, who managed to land his first ever swordfish, and what a swordy it was. Weighing in at a smidge under 200 kilos, it was a monstrous fish that took over four hours to land. Joining me on this outing to the deep offshore canyons is one of my close friends and the bloke that I do most of my game fishing with, Jules Coyne. Many of you who regularly watch Fishing Edge will recognise Jules from previous episodes. Jules is a co-owner in a company called Astrotech, and if he's not working or spending time with the family, he's out fishing. And it would be fair to say his preferred style of fishing is definitely game fishing. After the previous day's capture with Tom, Jules and I were keen to try and tag and then release a broadbill. With the GPS saying we had 79 kilometres to the fishing grounds, we set out just on first light for the long haul offshore. This is what we're looking for as we're coming down off a ledge here in 494 metres of water. And we've got the bottom there and we've also got this feed layer and the feed layer is made up of you know microscopic stuff and tiny little squid and fish that's the food for the bigger fish and they are the food for the bigger fish this is where the food chain starts so this is where we're going to look around and probably start fishing so after finding the area we wanted to fish it was time to get the first bait ready to send down Two lights that we're running on the rig. This is my little dural light, just a little fella. You watch this when I wet my fingers. It's water activated. There's two little metal plates, one there and one there. And when it's wet, it flashes. Doesn't look like much here, but trust me, down deep, that is like a party. And this one here that Jules has got, the Lingram Pitman. Turn him on. That guy there, again, hard to see, but that is it's the disco light. That's the Metro <laughs> nightclub on Saturday night. <laughs> Let's send it down, and this is what attracts the swordfish to our area. This is our bait, big arrow squid. Just make sure he's not twisted up. We've got our line here that we're gonna send this down, then we'll snap the brick off, and this squid will just be floating around, looking all the world like a real squid. You got the line through your wrist, dude? Yep, off we Stop go. the brick, go for it. You're on, go. Yeah, ratchet's on, free spool, all good. Bombs away, bombs away. Bombs away. We just got a bite on our swordfish bait. I'm not too sure what's going on. Oh, there he is. I just felt him again. Jules is getting electric up. Yeah, he's got it. He's pulling mine off of your free spool. Start winding. I'm getting a bit of weight here. Look at that tip just starting to load. We've got weight. We've got weight. We've got weight. Just keeping this line tight. Jules is clipping me in. Yeah, keep winding. He's on his way up probably, Lee. You're right, Jules. I think it could be coming up. Mate, do you want to just grab my harness and I'll just clip straight in and I can just wind then. That into there. That into there. He's starting to come up. Here we go. He's pulling back. And this is, how's that? We've come. We're in 450 metres of water. He's going to come up. And this thing has literally just come up with us the whole way. As you can see, it's a little bit calm. Now it's digging in. It's a bit like we've been saying that we... In these depths, we treat every bite. Yeah, even just that. You know, every bite we treat as a sword until we're proven otherwise. And in this case, for all the thoughts, we uh, <laughs> thought it was everything but, but. We did, didn't we? Like, and that's. As it's turned out, surprise, surprise. And that's probably our biggest thing we say to people back home is everyone goes, what do you do? How do you know? And we just go, every bite is a swordfish. Now he's waking up. Now he's gone, oh, that's right, I'm a swordfish. I'm supposed to be back down on the bottom. Lee, is the plan to really just try to trace it like a male and get a tag in him and, and release? Do you want to do anything else than that? No, or? no, no. I think we just try and let him go. All right. If we can get the hook out, we will. You see here, I'm using my body weight to work this equipment. I'm actually leaning back. If this line was to break, 
I would end up on my bum so quick. I'm resting where I can, and I'm not touching the foregrip on that rod. My left hand sits on the reel, right hand's there. Get off him. Keep going, keep going. He's still there. That just got way too light. Sorry, Lee. No, 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 mate, I had, it just got real light, like he was screaming at us. That fish was just plugging away about 50 metres down, and all of a sudden there was two big head shakes. The line went slack, and I'm like, oh, he's gone. And then the line went really slack, and that fish was just screaming straight at us, and Jules just had to go flat, stick in reverse, pull the nose around that way to get, to get the line away from the fish. And that's a good trick that when you're in a situation like that, if you go forward, you're gonna take the line near the props. If you go backwards, if the line touches the hull up near the front, it's all smooth and you shouldn't bust off. So as he was doing now, we're pulling back away. All right, that's it, dude. Nice work. These guys are the masters of... Getting under the boat. Oh, just surprised too, aren't they, Jules? Like they just do things and you go, how did it do that so quickly? Their direction change can be so fast that they'll come screaming up and then before you know it, they're on their way back down or under the boat. We've been fortunate now to see a few. Lair, nose to the left, dude. I got it. Jules and I have seen a few in the last couple of years. You know, fishing with Richie and Abella and guys like that, and they've got such a long bill and their bill's so wide, it's not round like a marlin, that you watch them when they swim, if they tip their bill one way, everything's accentuated. If they tip their bill down, it's like a huge rudder, and they'll do that, and then the whole fish just shoots down because they've got this big planing plank just, you know, forcing water. It's like the bib on a, a like a big X-wrap or something like that. So you've got to be so ready for their silliness. Now he's not happy. Look at that, big head shakes. Look at that. The thing is with these fish too, mate, this thing could be, this could be 60 kilos, couldn't it, Jules? Just, just because they fight hard doesn't mean it's a big fish. That's right. And you'll see here, the gear we've got, it's my Makaira 80 wide, beautiful drag system on it. It's coming up, Lee. And on here, I've got a bit of red tape and there's all numbers along that red tape. And that tells me where my drag's at right now. I've got 10 kilos on this guy. If I push that up as I'm going to right now, I've got 12, 14, 16, and full drag is about 18 kilos. So it allows me to know where I'm at. Jules will dictate as well. He'll go, I reckon you should pull it back to 10 and go up more or... Then you're not playing a guessing game with your drag pressure. You know exactly where you're at. The rod is an 80 Fathoms custom sword rod and you'll see it's quite tippy and that's so that we can see the bite but also because it's a vertical fight you want that rod to be able to fold away low close to your body and not hurt you. My little legs aren't made for this. There's our double. Light. Grab the lighter quick. That's it. Little fella. Just the one we want. Keep going. Oh, he's not that bad. Oh! He's been monstered. He's actually not a bad fish. He's been monstered by a shark. Wow. He's done, Lee, so just hang on a minute. Look at the bite mark on the side, but it's not like a fatal one. It's a very much a scratchy sort of bite mark. Oh, you're gonna tag him? Beautiful. Just try and hold his head, I reckon, down. Drop the door out. Might as well. Wow. That's cool. That is awesome. Look at that. He's not a monstrous fish, but I reckon he's probably 90. He'd be a good 90 kilos. Yeah, yeah. My skirt. Let's go get another one. Well done, buddy. Congratulations. Shove her off, or him off. Unfortunately, in fishing and life, sometimes your best laid plans don't go as expected. We tagged this sortie sent it off, it swum down a few metres, and then about 30 seconds later to a minute, just popped to the top, and, and we've tried, we went over to it, we've tried to swim it now for 15 odd minutes, and unfortunately, this sortie has expired. Maybe that shark attack did more to it than what, what we thought, so who knows? Unfortunately, we're gonna have to keep it, we're not gonna waste it, they're amazing eating, but I'm just bummed because, you know, I've caught a few swords and, and it's great to be able to let them go, but, Unfortunately, this one wasn't to be. However, we're going to try and 
get another one and make sure the next one swims away. Let's get it in, Jules. This is what we're, we're fishing on. There's a fish right there at 200 metres on the sound, a big red line. There's something big hanging down there. But this is what's getting us all excited. This is called a feed layer. That's all that really small food that these big predators come in on because the smaller fish are eating that. And it's quite amazing that earlier this morning, it was like a proverbial desert here. But as the tides changed and started to push back in on the edge of the shelf, this feed layer has pushed back in. And with it, have come the big predators. With the deep dropping, we're always trying to add that little bit more to our system. We've got the baits there, and I've got this little strobe light water activated. Just wet those two little things there, and that should be flashing away like a champion. You can hardly see it, but it is flashing really, really bright, and it will help to attract the fish that we want to catch. It's all good. Bombs away. See, got hit, Lee. Got the electric coming up, and we've just had a bite on the swordfish bait as well, and it's amazing that how often you'll be pulling a fish up on the bottom rod, and obviously that fish kicking down deep helps drag the swordfish in, and then they see our bait, and you get a bite. It's like having a big live teaser. Turn the ratchet off. I want you to crank it like 10 to 20 times. Give it more, give it more, give it more, give it more. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Stop, stop. Got a bit going on here, we're rigging sword baits. Look at this, Lee. There you go, dude, just see what you can feel going on. I'm just trying to suss out what's going on here. Got the electric getting close. Just hit it again. Hey. Just hit it again. Let him have it if he wants it, mate. Has he hit it again? Yeah, I reckon he's on his way up, Lee. Okay. Are you on the rod, Jules? Oh, I think you are. Oh, he's got it. That's cool. We teased that fish beautifully. Are you going to go up on him now? I reckon. Squeeze up on him. Just squeeze up on him. We're tight, mate. We're tight. Oh. Is he still there? Yeah, man. He's there. Just driving off here, just helping Jules to get tight on this fish. There was nothing crazy, and this is the thing, that, that fish took a couple of minutes then to actually get, get sorted and eat the bait. I reckon, I reckon you, you wound that bait up at least 50 metres, 50 Jules. metres up. And you can just adjust the straps from there. Are you right for a sec, Jules? Yeah, you just do your thing. I'll get this sorted. We've got something big and silvery, bluey looking. Could be a blue eye, could be a, I don't know. Oh, it's a beautiful blue eye. Look at this. Julian. Did we get it? We got him. Yes. <laughs> Check this out. Look at that. Now that, that's a fine eating there, boy. That, my friends, is a blue eye traveller. Amazing eating. And there's lots of them here, wide of Lake's entrance. Quite stinky. I'm going to chop him straight into the ice slurry and we'll get this swordfish sorted out that Julian's found himself connected to. Do you want me to drive off him a yes, bit, Yes, please, mate. Yeah, when you're sure. ready. I'll just get that there. He's coming straight up. I'm just going to put the motor in gear. Just in gear's probably enough. I'll just get a little bit tight for yeah. you. And then I'll back it off. So I'll take that belly out, that's it. This fish is just screaming to the surface at the moment. Thank you, mate. You all right? Yep. And the way you sort of work at it is that you go, well, where we are, we're in 459 metres of water. And to get your bait down that deep, it takes almost 10 minutes. When these fish scream to the top, it takes them way, way less time than that to get to the top. So we're free spooling a bait down with a brick on it. They're coming up faster than that brick can go down. We caught a blue eye, Jules. <laughs> That's a big thing for Jules <laughs> yeah, and I. We don't catch blue eye. That bite then was all about just, just being really patient. Yes. 
further we come up, that fish just sort of kept following it up. And like you said, we had to probably bring in 50, 60 metres of line yeah. before he's decided to eat it. So. That's right. We had that bait down there and it was that belly flat. And that would have just been wafting along in the current unweighted because we'd taken the weight off it. And it's sitting there and he's come up and whacked it. And then Jules cranked it up and that, that bait would actually wriggle as it goes. He's cranked it up and old Sorty goes, hey, that's supposed to be dead, comes in, whacks it again. Oh, and he kept do. doing that as, as it was coming up. And it was funny, the further you brought it up, the more aggressive the bites got. That's right. He's going down, man. Now, nah, as you are, Lee, keep backing up on him. Yeah. Yep, that way. Mono's on. Yep. But how often do we get that, Jules? Go, oh, this will be all over in a minute, three hours later. Let's go. Forward, forward, forward. Here he is. Here he is. Here he goes. Here he goes. There he is. Look, look, look. Oh, look. yeah. Staying up for us, boys. Go get him, Lee. Very clean looking fish, Jules. Real Great silvery fish, and yeah. clean and whoa, oh, there's a big head shake. You're good, Jules. He's coming up again, Lee. Sorry, mate, every time you jump off the wheel, he's changing direction. What do you want me to do? Just drive off him a little bit. We're trying to keep that line, as much line on him with a bit of angle to bring his head up. Once we get up and down on these fish, it's very, very hard to budge them, so just getting the boat away from him is key. I'm going to go backwards now, Jules. Ready? Yep. You'll watch Lee will put the boat into reverse and we'll see if we can change that angle. I'm only on 10 kilos at the moment, Lee. Do you want to just state that for now? Oh, it's your call, man. Just maybe squeeze it up a bit, but it's up to you. If you're happy. No, I'll go. Look, he's close, so I can put a bit more. I'm going to go to 12 now because yeah, I've got. Yeah, just punch it up to 12. You won't hurt it. I like fishing the mono. Like, that's. 37 kilo Black Magic IGFA mono line on the top shot. We've got a thousand meters of 80 pound braid under it. But when I'm on the mono, I feel really confident. We can fish heavy drag, heavy drag. You know, it just works so beautifully. The fluorescent color helps me as the driver to be able to see where that line's going. We can see what the fish is doing a little bit better. But Jules is punching that drag up sort of to 12 kilos. We can go to 16 or more if we need but 12 kilos is a lot of pressure on your body and the fish. You right there, mate? Yep. <laughs> How awesome is that? <laughs> now, there goes your shot. No, he's all right. He's no, still there. Still no, there. No. Are, you, are you right if I just leave the boat here? Yeah, at the moment. Turn your motors, though. That way? That way for me. That was cool. How's the... Just the beef on them, we're just big and it's awesome. Bad, tough. You can see here, Jules is just using his whole body to fight this fish. He's just rocking back and forth, actually leaning back. Using his whole body weight, stacks of drag, clamping down on the spool. We've got 80 pound line. He's giving this fish a lot of curry. That's what you need to do to break. Oh, broke him off. Done. Done. It's cracked. That hurt. I was starting to think, geez, you're giving him a bit. It's got like a scuff on it. I wish you got a scuff on it there. I wish something's hit the line or something. Earlier in the fight though. But it's broken right in the middle of the like it's yeah. not it's not anywhere near anything but there's a scuff through there. The main line's broken. Alrighty mate. It is that time, Julian. Keep Home wanting. time. <laughs> Home time. Get that bait up. We've had a cracking day, I think. Look, I think anywhere in game fishing where you catch the target species per day, one of them, it's a good day. Yep. And with a sea like this, no complaints. So it's going to be a nice day. It doesn't get home. much better than this. It's going to be awesome. Autopilot, whole way. Let's get out of here. Let's do it.